Okay, well, I guess if it's okay with everybody, we'll go ahead and um, start the meeting. And um, if Susie comes in later, that'll be good. So um, I'd like to call the meeting to order. And uh, I think as far as roll call, everyone's here except for Bryden um, and our city council liaison and um, Eileen. So um, the first thing I'd like to do is welcome Callie. Cordova, who is our new board member. She was appointed yesterday, so she's brand new, um, but we're very happy that, that you're here, Kelly. So thank you for joining us. Um, in addition, we have a member of the public joining us tonight. Uh, hi, Sheila. Please introduce yourself and give your full name and address, and then you have the floor. Please go ahead. I didn't know I was going to have the floor. Um, my full name is Sheila Conroy. I'm retired and live at 518 Gay Street in Longmont. And I do a little bit of writing for the um, Longmont Leader. And I usually review um, museum Thursday nights and anything else, and the, and the reopening. And uh, I, I think that Longmont is very lucky to have a facility like the museum, and um, I, uh, I admire you all and congratulate you all for keeping it, keeping it going in these terrible times. So I'm just here to see what's on the cards and um, what's going to be happening. Well, great. Well, welcome and thank you very much. And uh, if you have questions or uh, comments, I, as far as I'm concerned, you're free to Raise your hand if you'd like to add a comment at our appropriate times, okay? Great, thank you. Hi, welcome Susie. Hello. Since you weren't here, um, Susie, just so you know, we do have a new board member. I, well, you probably do know since you were yeah, at the meeting yesterday, <laughs> um, but Callie did join us. So she's, mm -hmm. she's here with us as well. Uh, so I guess the first thing we should look at is the um, the minutes from, from our previous meeting. Um, anybody have any questions or um, corrections for that? If not, um, is there a motion to approve? I so move, Dale. Thank you, Dale. Is there a second? Chris seconds. Sorry, I didn't see who that was. Chris. Chris, great. Thank you, Chris. Um, and all in favor of approving the minutes from last meeting, say aye and raise your hand or any opposed? Okay. Dale, are you opposed or is that a delayed reaction for the approve? Well, no, that was, I'm, I don't know what's wrong with my transmission, but no, I'm not opposed. Okay, thank you. So the minutes are approved unanimously. Thank you all. Um, so we'll just keep on going here and um, look at the accessions, Eric, if you would. All right, well, you could start the PowerPoint. Um, so we can go ahead to the next slide. Um, so we only have two accessions this month. Uh, the first one is a single abstract of title. This is a pretty standard uh, legal document for tracing ownership of properties and uh, very handy if you happen to own that particular property. It tells you everybody who ever owned it or had any kind of a transaction in it. So uh, when, these, when these are uh, offered to us, we usually accept them. Um, but anyway, this one is actually for uh, land at 911 Kimbark Street in Longmont. Uh, any questions on the abstract of title? If not, we'll go on to the next slide. So this is a little more unusual. Um, I, I know that uh, Dale Bernard is familiar with Tom Taylor. I don't know if anyone else uh, on the board is, but um, he was uh, born and raised in Longmont. And um, 
then eventually went to California, became an artist, became very involved in the uh, conceptual art movement um, and produced a number of different pieces in different media and so forth. And this is a piece of conceptual art completed between 1969, 1971. Uh, the total piece, which I couldn't even really photograph because it takes up more room than I had, but it is 100 individual sheets of um, photostat, uh, essentially like a, like a photocopy. Um, done by a number of different artists. Tom did some of them, but uh, friends of his and other folks did them as well. They are around the concept of consider your confines. Um, and people took this in all kinds of different directions. And, and um, so I gave some just sort of generic overviews and then a few individual um, scans of, of this. Um, Tom Taylor now lives in Pueblo West. He's in his 80s um, and uh, approached the museum about, did we want this artwork? And um, uh, after some discussions back and forth, we thought, well, yes, not only is it by an artist that um, has a lot of Longmont connections, but there are actually a lot of Longmont elements within this artwork. For example, it's a little hard to see, but the uh, image in the lower left um, is actually um, photo copies of uh, historic photos relating to uh, his ancestry. Uh, so the, uh, the, one of the gentlemen pictured is Amos Millais, who was an early Longmont uh, pioneer. Uh, the house, uh, one of the houses that uh, uh, the family was connected to. And, uh, just uh, a lot of different Longmont elements. And as well, it really does kind of document that time and history of conceptual art and so forth. So um, it's an interesting piece. I'm, I'm curious if people have uh, questions about it. So I will also just note for full disclosure that the Artwork does include male nudity and some profanity. Um, so that that is just one other thing for you all to be aware of. Are there any comments, questions, concerns? Okay, maybe we should have had cookies. <laughs> I might just add one other thing to Eric's comments, and I'm sorry I didn't read through all of the, the things that you had written there, but um, correct me if I'm wrong, I think he's he has exhibited this work at the museum before. Yeah, um, very, very good point. Um, yeah. He actually, that was the first email he said, this, this work was first exhibited at the Longmont Pioneer Museum as it was then in 1971, so 50 years ago. Um, at that point, the museum was about three uh, ver buildings ago. It was it was in a um, building in downtown, and um, it's no longer even there, I believe. And um, so it's sort of fascinating. And he was actually able to get us the same edition. It's a 100 edition work. Um, he was able to get us the same edition that the museum actually exhibited in 1971, edition number 30. So. Um, kind of, kind of a fascinating element of, of Longmont Museum history as well. So yeah, thanks Kim for reminding me. Great. Um, anybody else have comments? I was just going to say I think it's something worth preserving, right? I mean, that's really what the work of the museum is: is to collect these documents and these works, and we're preserving them for whenever um, we may find that. We want to display them or have them available. So I think it's something that makes sense for the collection. Great, anybody else? Okay, thank you, Eric. All right, so. Um, do I, go ahead. No, I was just 
asking for a, if they needed a motion or. Yep. And I move to accept the accessions. And is there a second? This is Rhea, I second. Thank you, Rhea. All in favor? Raise your hand, wave your hand. And opposed, anyone opposed? Great, so that um, accession is approved. Great, thank you Thank you much. all. And then one other piece of acquisitions news that uh, I'm kind of excited about. Um, we are pretty certain that we will be able to acquire the first vials of vaccine used at both Longmont United Hospital and uh, Longs Peak UC Health Hospital um, for the museum's collection. So uh, cool. we approached them this, uh, this week uh, through uh, Dan Eman with the City Emergency Management and uh, uh, both hospitals have indicated uh, that they are interested in doing that. So. Um, that is something you will be seeing at a subsequent board meeting. Wow, that's great, Eric. Thanks. Anything else cool coming up that you'd like to? There's other people that have expressed some interest, but none of them are quite definite enough that I can feel like I can really share um, things right now. So, uh, but those those seem pretty certain. There may be an article in the paper tomorrow about about that. So. Great, thank you. Okay, um, Kim, would you like to give your director's report? I would love to, thank you. And thanks, Eric. I think um, I wanna give Eric some props for the um, what is very probable with this, um, the COVID vials, because he was the one that basically reached out to try to make sure that we got this. I think that Eric's been doing a great job of trying to understand what and how we can document this moment that we're living through, which is just bizarro world. And, um, you know, Eric's got a big job here. So I, I thank him for reaching out to make sure that we get some of that stuff represented in our collection. So props to Eric. This is actually kind of a long um, report. And so I don't wanna go through every word of it because um, I think part of, partly you guys all know that we've been doing tons and tons of um, online programming and virtual programming. So um, a lot of that is what you see in this report. Um, I, I don't mean to diminish all of it, but, but I think that I, I, I'll let you guys read through some of those details on your own. I wanna to try to, um, focus on more higher level um, uh, things on the report. And then if you've got questions, just, you know, raise your hand. I can't, I'm going to read like this. So maybe you should like say something. So I get um, noticed, but um, so I'll start at the beginning there that um, we reopened as of yesterday. So we've been closed for a couple of weeks based on Boulder County going to red, but what ended up happening and this, there was a lot of um, folks who were uh, very active about this at the state level um, in terms of museum advocacy um, that, that what ended up happening is that the state actually created a new category and that new category is basically educational institutions. And so it's um, museums are mentioned specifically, galleries, zoos, uh, and a couple of other organizations um, that basically that new category gives us the ability to be open even when we are considered and read in the dial for COVID. And so with that um, new designation, we are allowed to be open. We're limited to 25% or 25 people maximum um, per room. Um, and so that gives us the ability to be able to open our galleries, which is a really great thing. I think especially for um, being able to honor the exhibit that we have right now, which is the Dia de los Muertos and um, Tony Ortega. And we, you know, we're not getting great numbers. We're not getting huge crowds coming in, but we are getting a few people trickling in and, and, and I think it's impactful. So that's a really good thing. Um, we, we did, um, the actual order took place a week ago, Tuesday, um, and we delayed for a little bit just so we could make some modifications to our front desk and make sure that we've got the right cleaning um, schedules. Um, and so 
we opened officially yesterday um, back back to our regular unusual schedule, which is um, Tuesday through Saturday, nine to three. Um, so we're open right now, which is great. Um, and then we'll see how it goes, because I think that we are being very responsive when it comes to what's happening with case counts and what's happening with the state or, uh, uh, orders. So none of us are are under some um, illusion that this is going to stick for long, but we're, we're doing our best to make sure that we can provide services and be able to open the doors to, to the museum. I think it's important. Um, so that's, that's probably the biggest news that we have going on right now. Um, we also are eligible for some relief money that was part of the, um, the session that just ended um, with the state that some relief funds. And so we'll see exactly what happens with that. I, I have only dug into it very, very um, minimally so far um, to understand exactly what the requirements are. We may not be eligible. I'm sorry, go ahead, Eve. Sorry, I had a quick question. Yeah. This is Maria. Um, I just wanted to go back to um, being open again. Do you have to have reduced staff in order to also meet the 25% requirement? The staffing requirement is also at 25%. And for us, I think that's 10 people. Even through this whole thing, we very rarely have needed to have more than that in the building. And so we've, we've been really pretty good about that. Um, the thing that has changed is um, regulations as it relates to masking. And so basically what used to be the case is that if you were with uh, someone who had coronavirus, if you were exposed, um, if you were, if you had a mask, if you had a mask on, you were within six feet, it wasn't considered an exposure. What has changed is that whether or not you have a mask, if you are within six feet of someone and um, for more than 15 minutes in a 24 hour period, that's considered an exposure. So there, there has been some changes in terms of what's considered an exposure, but ultimately the, the staffing has been, we, you know, it's a big building and we, there are not that many people that are required to work closely with each other. So we haven't really hit a threshold where we felt like we were in danger at all. Okay, great. Thank you so much. I apologize for interrupting. No, I, anytime, just interrupt. I, but I am reading over here. So if I don't see you, pipe up. Yeah. Um, Okay, so let's see, what else was I saying? Okay, so the relief uh, bill. So I, like I said, I've only dug into it ever so slightly. The thing that I don't quite understand is whether or not we are eligible for this money. And I'll find that out more lately. But basically um, what I understand is that there is a pot of money and it's going to expire once, you know, everybody applies for it and it gets distributed. So I think um, time is of the essence, um, but I'm working with the accounting department to understand exactly what we need to submit for that. So I'll, I'll keep you informed about whether or not we actually submit for that um, application. Um, SCFD is actually really good news because the revenue um, that uh, they've been seeing is now off only by like 3%, it's less than 3%. So if you recall what they had originally estimated for our distribution was 120, about $125,000. And with these new estimates, um, we'll probably get more like $170,000. So I, I think that what we're seeing is that the economy actually is doing okay during all of this. You know, People are still buying and people are still spending money um, even when they can't go to the restaurant and that sort of thing. So that's good news for us. Um, as you recall, one of the things that we had outlined in our strategic um, planning is that we wanted to be able to hire a fund development manager with the funds that we were getting from SCFD. And um, that ad change form to be able to hire for that position is making its way through approvals. I don't have approval yet um, to hire for that position. Um, but I, I am optimistic about it because I think it seems to be making its way through the approval process. Um, what that would be able to do for us is, you know, a development person would 
expand our um, the kind of launch that we've gotten from this SCFD dollars. We would be able to target um, individual donors in a more focused way, and we would be able to focus on grants. We would be, you know, because Eric's been our grant writer for the last year, basically. So that's not even his job. Um, so we would be really be able to expand what we are doing in terms of fundraising if we we're able to hire for this position. So I'm super optimistic about that. And I think that um, once we are able to get approval for that, again, I'll let you know. Um, so uh, theoretically, that would be a January 1 hire, um, depending on when that approval happens. And then the other thing based on that master development plan, if you might recall, is that um, we had a master development plan in there for an expansion of the museum. And we have been able to hire studio architects. And so we're underway trying to just look at planning for an expansion of the museum. And what that will give us is just tools to understand what would be required. And so so that master development plan is going to give us some sense of like how we can expand and how much it's going to cost to expand. And so um, we started that a couple of weeks ago. I've got a meeting on Friday to understand where the architects are in the process. And we hope to be able to have um, some more concrete information from them pretty soon, actually. And then other things on the list, but again, feel free to um, ask uh, if you've read through this and you've got any questions, but I just wanna point out that um, the exhibits that we're currently working on are really quite exciting. Um, coming up in January, we've got Enduring Impressions, which, which is um, a, a impressionism exhibition um, from a, a collector in Denver. Um, and so that's gonna be opening in January. Um, and we're super excited about that. I think it's gonna be a, a pretty much a blockbuster, if you will. Um, and then of course the Longmont 150, which Eric is really involved in. And we're um, gonna be bringing in collections from our, um, you know, our own collection. We're gonna be bringing in lots of stories and, and um, lots of history from, you know, the book. Um, so we're super excited about bringing that exhibition online. And then let's see, a couple of other things. Um, Eric, again, I mentioned that Eric's been writing a lot of grants lately. One of the things that he's written a grant for recently is to move textile storage. So um, as a reminder to some and maybe as new information to others, when our new um, museum collections center was opened or was built, um, that essentially was the big 3D um, collections. And so all of that stuff was moved out and unpacked and has been photographed and cataloged and lots of work have, has been going on with that collection. But what remains at the museum is our textile storage. And so we need to move those co collections out to that new storage sp space too. Um, but uh, we don't have the money to do that because it's not cheap. And so Eric's been writing a lot of grants to be able to pull that off. And so we should find out um, soon, um, we'll hear next August whether or not those get funded. And then um, I think that once that happens, there'll be a kind of a domino effect of like, you know, something else fills in the space of, of textile storage that we have now, probably office space, probably some storage space. Um, and then we'll start really filling in the gaps um, based on that master development plan that we're working on with the architects. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Um, I think the one of the things to make sure that everybody is aware of is that during the coronavirus, um, there have been a couple of different things. I, I'm sure I've mentioned this before, but um, our staff has been really helpful in terms of citywide needs. And so um, Ann Maka created um, a big project for mask making, and then our exhibitions guys have created a lot of plexiglass barriers and so um, it's that work is actually continuing because of um, what has happened with the Longmont Housing Authority so um, with this we're, we've basically brought on the functionality the city has brought on the functionality of the Longmont Housing Authority and so Jared and his team are creating more plexiglass barriers for um, the folks in those different facilities. So um, it's kind of, um, it's been wonderful to be able to support some of the other needs in the city. And the fact that we've got this, these, this equipment at the museum has been really helpful. Um, so we're trying um, to also purchase a laser cutter um, for the exhibitions department. And I think that that's gonna be an a piece of equipment that'll probably um, 
do do kind of a similar thing that this is um, a piece of equipment the the way that we've been able to do the plexiglass barriers is that through our shop bot through our um, CNC cutter and so this laser cutter I think would be a, a, a piece of equipment that would also really expand what we are able to do and what we're able to offer to the city so I think it would be a great piece of equipment for us to have so we're trying to work through that approval process as well um, and I don't know if all of you um, had a chance to um, sign on during our holiday um, webathon, but it was a really quite fun um, program. And um, our our benefactors, the Stewart Family Foundation, has agreed to um, match the donations that we received through the telethon, through our annual giving campaign, and through. Um, Colorado gives. So they're matching up to $100,000 through the end of the year. So if you know anybody who's interested in um, donations to the museum, their money's going to be doubled um, through the Stewart Family Foundation. And so that was something that was um, a surprise and, and really super exciting to hear. So um, they were very active in um, the program that night. And I think it was super fun. There were Justin put together a really exciting event that night. It was lots of um, conversations and music and a lot of fun. So I think I think he pulled off the very best virtual holiday program we probably could have ever done. Um, let's see what else. Um, the Eric's book with it we've we've referenced now a couple times. Here it is. If you don't have your copy or if if you need more copies, the museum has it. Um, we have really had great response to this. Um, in the first couple of weeks, we had uh, 450 copies sold. Um, we do have, even if the museum is closed, we have um, curbside delivery service for folks who wanna buy things at the gift shop and that's one of them. Um, and so the response from that book has been unbelievable. So again, thank you, Eric, for, I know that was, basically a year of your life um, that you put into that book and it's gorgeous and it's just amazing. So thank you so much. And then finally, let's see, there's um, things happening with our art and public places program that I wanted to make sure that I mentioned um, because you, you all may know about the, um, the mural that was at Ninth and Alpine that was tagged kind of uh, repeatedly, and the artist has been working really closely with um, Angela Brill, our um, Art and Public Places as min administrator, to be able to remediate that. And so there's some um, images there what, of what he is going to end up doing to be able to repair that. And I think that everybody is very excited about um, the things that he's going to be able to do. And what's going to happen is that they're going to paint it, and then they're going to seal it. And this kind of damage won't happen again. So we're very, very excited about that project finally coming to a conclusion. So Kim, it'll say the Longmont together. That's the design that'll be on it. Okay. Yeah. It was a, um, basically what ended up happening. I don't know if you've seen that um, mural, but basically what had happened is that in the tunnel, there was a lot of graffiti and the kind of flanking on on the outside of it, there was less damage. And so what he did is that he really tried to um, uh, create a new design that would um, kind of unify that internal, that in, inside the, the tunnel piece of it. So that's what he came up with, which I think is really great given, given the context of all of it, because he is actually a very um, community dedicated artist. And so for him to come up with this new design, I think is really pretty fabulous. Great, Any where, where is a gather enough people going? I don't know if they know the answer to that yet. They have to move it based on um, some redesign that's happening. And I don't know that they have a final conclusion about where it's gonna end up. Is that because of um, redoing the the way the water flow is? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, thank you guys. I'm available if you do. Thanks, Kim. 
Okay, so um, <clears throat> I have one thing of old business. Um, uh, in August, um, we, we kind of already did this, but we've been asked by the city clerk's office uh, to establish our 2021 official agenda posting places for the record. So I uh, just want to put out that what the plan is that they are the Civic Center West Entrance Bulletin Boards and the Longmont Museum and on the museum's website. So um, like I said, we did talk about this in August, but if I could have a motion to approve these locations, um, we'll just do this again for the record. This is Chris, I so move. Thank you, Chris. And is there a second, Thomas? Thank you very yes. much. All in favor? Opposed? So that's a unanimous approval of those posting sites. Thank you. And then I, I do have one piece of new business unless somebody else has anything that's old business. Um, I just wanted to mention that there is uh, going to be a new member orientation, new board member orientation on Thursday, February 4th from six to eight. Um, it'll be a virtual um, program. And uh, Michelle Gomez, the city will reach out to all the new board members. Um, and then also if any of you who are not new board members would like a refresher or didn't go to orientation before, if you're interested, um, just let Joanne know and then she'll um, get an RSVP to Michelle and get you the, so you can get the appropriate link. Um, is, does anybody else have any new business? Nothing. Okay. Well, I want to thank all of you. Um, and uh, before we, before we adjourn, I'd like to wish everybody a happy holiday. And it's kind of hard to believe that they're here already, but they are. So um, is there a motion to adjourn? This is Rhea, motion to adjourn. Great, is there a second? You know, if no one seconds, we have to stay here all night. <laughs> I think Thomas has got his hand up to second. <laughs> all right, thank you, Thomas. All in favor of adjourning. <laughs> Great, thank you all. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you in January. 2021. Yeah, I'm, I know. I'm so <laughs> all get together, it'll be great. I hope so. That yeah. would be nice. I'm looking forward to that. All right. Thank There's you, holidays, everyone. Time. I'm Good night. Thanks, thanks for joining us, Kelly. I'm so glad you're here with us. Thank, thank you for joining us, Sheila.